Hello everyone, today is Thursday, October 28, 2021. This is the week and charts. I just want to thank all you guys and girls for being here. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. There's a lot of other things you could be doing. I appreciate you being here tonight. And thanks for those who gave me some ideas for the show and we'll watch it later. All right, what are we talk about? Obviously, current market conditions, I have a lot to say about that. Your questions on trading your favorite stock picks. If you don't mind, hold off till we get to the live charts. That way I'll, I won't get them confused or mixed up with the other questions and then ask about one at a time. So we're gonna focus on, well, I wanna keep on the trading stuff. And as I've been saying quite a bit, I've been really cognizant of what I do, especially cognizant of the ups and downs and everything. And I wanna share as much of that as possible with you and some of your ups and downs and trials and tribulations too. I want to talk about how to mine for free crypto, which I think is kind of a kind of a cool thing. We'll 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 see if you agree. And then inefficiency, the real holy grail follow up. I've been talking a lot about that lately, and I have a few things to reiterate there. So we will talk a lot about crypto tonight, but it's not just about the crypto; it's about trading in general. That was a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading, or as often sum it up, all predictions about the future. A lot of stuff can happen between now. And then, speaking of stuff, like I've been saying, I've been talking about this trading stuff a lot, been real cognizant of what I'm doing. And sometimes I just buy things that go up and sell things that go down. And right now, when you're in an inefficient market like crypto, you could do just that. And occasionally in IPOs, you could do that too. And I've showed some recent examples where I've done just that. I see Lawrence says he's not trusting buy at bees at the moment but keeping a close eye on them yeah it's kind of interesting the market got a little weak the other day and i saw a couple of buy at bees and i actually passed so i'm wondering if uh that was a little intuition there or what that was but if you have any in mind we'll uh, take a look at them when we get to the charts now last couple of weeks i talked about avoiding as many states of regret as possible and believe me I put myself into a lot of states of regret and, and basically you have to make a decision and then you have to live with it and living with it is the hard part. Anyway, one of my clients last week had pointed out that when CFLT was dropping like a stone, he was upset because he didn't sell the day before. And then by the end of the day, the end of the day it came back nicely. He tried to say in the following day, it came back even more. Now, this one's been a bit of a bumpy ride. Kind of reminds me of that MTTR we had not that long ago. But one of you guys was upset about the trading, the way the trading went, I should say, on one day. And I asked him, you know, what's what's got you upset? And it was one of the stocks in, in the service, uh, YMM. And we showed that example last week. Well, CFLT has become the new MTTR or new YMM. It's kind of all over the place, and it's really not a problem as long as it stays above the stop. And if it goes below the stop, then it's no longer a problem. I don't know. Easier said than done. But as I say, ad nauseum, with the trading service, my life is so much easier with those stocks because I recommend those stocks. I know where I'm getting in. I know where I'm getting out. I know how much, I know how much I'm going to put on. I try not to vary too much from the original plan. A little discretion every now and then can go a long ways as I preach. But for the most part, when I separate my watch list out and I have a watch list where I have the service stocks, and if that's getting whacked, I just look carefully at where all the stops are. And if there's no action to be taken, yeah, I drop an F-bomb, but I get on with my life. And I don't stress out and go through this mental masturbation of should I get out, should I stay, what should I do? The plan is already laid out for me. Now, I make it look a lot easier than it really is, but if you can be flippant in your trading, and more importantly, flippant in your execution, and just say, well, if this thing stops me out, what's his name? Paul, Paul Giamatti? as uh, he was in John Adams, playing John Adams. I said good day, sir. <laughs> I've yet to watch that. I guess I need to watch it because I quote that quote. 
And that actually helps me. I kind of laugh a little bit after I do it. I'm still pissed, but I laugh a little. But sometimes it could be that easy, okay? Just follow the plan. I know, easier said than done. We talked about reducing internal conflicts. One thing you could do is re reduce your observations. If I'm looking at, especially if it's intraday stuff I want to do, looking at three or four or five stocks, a lot of times the best thing for me to do is just put in a bunch of alerts and then go off and do what I have to do, work on my slides or whatever, record my trading simplified show or whatever the case may be. Use limit orders for IPTs and trailing stops when you have a decent move. What I'm talking about there is let's say you're looking for four points on a trade and uh, you're up about five points, you know, with the gap over, let's say gaps up overnight, and then you, you were up like three or four points a day before, and now you're up five or six points. Well, you've already kind of beat the initial profit target, so to speak. So in a case like that, you could put in a trailing stop on half of your position and squeeze out a little bit more. And that's something we talk about quite often. You got to be careful with not to play both ends against the middle. And that's one advantage I have of having this educational business. So one of the downfalls is <laughs> of it is that uh, it stresses me out a lot because sometimes I realize I might be being a hypocrite or I'm doing things I shouldn't do, even though I should know better. And I got out of about 90% of my Shiba Inu and I have a little small token position left, I don't know, 15 million or whatever. I forget how many. <laughs> it's not much. You know, and I'm sitting there watching it and I can't decide whether I want it to go up or down. You know, so you got to be kind of careful to try to play both ends against the middle. It's like you can't paint yourself to that corner or put yourself in that situation. It's like if it goes down, I feel good because I sold 90% of it. If it goes up, then it'll be okay because I still have a little bit left. But you, you can't, again, put yourself in a lose-lose situation. And, and sometimes I'll end up with puts on something, and then before you know it, I'll end up with calls. And, and that's a very dangerous thing to do. Follow your plan. Jeez, how, how often could we – do I have to beat that dead horse? How often do I need to relearn that lesson too? And then I put this in last minute, and this is something I've talked quite a bit about before. And this goes back to, to Mark Douglas. If there's fear or animosity or whatever other emotions, over emotions, I should say, in your trading, then you haven't fully accepted the risk. Okay. And I'm guilty of that one too sometimes. If you're if you're trading at a proper size, it shouldn't stress you out a lot. And by the way, if you were trading at a proper size and it stresses you out a lot, you're a little newer to trading, then by all means reduce your share size down until it becomes a little bit more second in nature to be able to follow that plan. All right, got a few questions coming in before we shift gears. <laughs> yeah, Paul Giamatti is great in uh, Billions, absolutely. I like the, 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 I haven't caught up with it. I'm probably about two or three seasons behind. I used to ride the Peloton, and right now Peloton's collecting dust. There was a pedal issue or something, and I couldn't get them changed out. And, I don't know. But anyway, long story endless. But yeah, I used to catch up while I was on the Peloton. I like the older ones where the psychologist plays a bigger role and, and she kind of kicks the traders in the butt. And, and I just would be like, how great would it be to you know, walk around the curtain and have a psychologist wait for you? Especially that brunette. She's uh, she's somewhat attractive. <laughs> That's OK. My wife doesn't watch this show. Okay, let's shift gears and talk a little bit about crypto, or a lot of bit about crypto. Now, I know some of you guys don't trade crypto. Nothing wrong with that. If you're not comfortable, do it. Don't do not do it. Don't let me talk you into it. I don't really have anything to gain, by the way. It's like I don't have a crypto trading service or anything like that. So whether you trade it or not, it's no skin off of my back. But one thing where I I guess I do have a personal interest is, is A, it's a wonderfully inefficient market right now as I'll flesh out and beat the dead horse on over and over tonight and in upcoming presentations, I'm sure. B, following the methodology and following trend following and following proper money management and position management and hybrid money management, it's all unfolding quite beautifully there. And, and that should get you excited about that, or at least it should make you feel like, hey, 
this stuff can work, this trend following stuff can work, this taking partial profits, this hybrid approach. And it makes a lot of sense. But you know, don't do anything you're not comfortable with. Okay. But the, the point is it's inefficient, meaning that these markets are moving and it's very exciting. And I think there's a lot of money to be made. And I worry a little bit that that there's going to be clampdowns, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a second, to where I feel like it's kind of like we we need to make hay while the sun shines. And I'm tempted to fire one off right now. <laughs> but anyway, I want you to see it as a, an emerging market, emerging inefficient market, and learn how to recognize that. So maybe the next one that comes along that might make a little bit more sense to you, not that you you want to invest in things that make sense or trade things that make sense, believe me. But I think it's very important that you recognize where the money is, just like the NASDAQ, as I've been saying in my stock charts shows, in 2000, or before, or actually, you know, I guess early 2000, but and from 1995, 96 through 2000, May of 2000, I think, it was a wonderful place to be, and it went up 400% or whatever. And I I remember people were poo-pooing, oh, it's, a, it's all bullshit, bullshit. You know, it's, it's going to go down. See, I told you. Well, how much money did you make on the ride up? And I guarantee you didn't short it on the way down. Anywho. Now, a, a lot of people think it's a passing fad. It might be, as I say each week, you know, it's got on somebody's newsletter and you know, he poo pooed Bitcoin at 4,000 and 5,000 and 6,000 and 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. And at, where are we now? 60, I got it in euros. Oh, 60,719. I'm sure he's poo pooing it now. And if it drops, he's going to take, he's going to say, I told you so. Well, how much money did he make in the meantime? I think that Bitcoin is here to stay. And I know when I start talking about things like this, I'm confusing the issue with facts. But I was trying to find out how many miners there are. And I'm sure everybody here knows what a miner is. If not, Google it. But a, a miner is a computer. I'll show you a picture of one in a second that does calculations to facilitate Bitcoin and transactions in Bitcoin and the creation of Bitcoin. And I was trying to find out how many miners there are. I think there's. I saw one quote of over 200,000, but I'd bet there, I bet, I'd be willing to bet there's probably over a million of these miners around the world. As long as the miners exist, Bitcoin will exist. And by accident, I found this, this Twitter account documenting Bitcoin, and it said there are 10,000 nodes protecting the network right now. Now, I have a hard time wrapping my head around Bitcoin, like many people do. But I saw a different graphic that had little dots and little connecting uh, lines between them all. And I, I couldn't really, I couldn't find it on a fly. But basically you think about like a, a Fed or someone, central bank, whatever, controlling a currency or government, okay? Whereas this is a, a broad network. And right now there's 10,000 nodes and each one of these nodes has an entire copy of the Bitcoin ledger. So think about them as, as distributed central banks or little little tiny central banks. And there's probably a million of those and there's at least 10,000 of them that have the complete code for the, or ledger I should say, for Bitcoin. So I think it's here to stay. As I said, my stock charts show, I was watching some YouTube videos and, and one mining forum was talking about the fact that, and they gave a tour of it and they showed that uh, they're, they're building their, their miners or putting their miners into freight containers, shipping containers. And if things don't go the way they want here or the government clamps down or whatever, they're gonna stick them on a ship and send them over to Russia. And they seem to have some kind of deal worked out where there's cheap power over there to power these things. So just think of these as little processing computers, very powerful processing computers that process, the transactions, and they make a little fraction of a transaction off of the process through these digital currencies or cryptocurrencies, you want to call them that. So again, don't miss the point, as I've been saying quite a bit, it's an inefficient trader's dream, okay? And if you can seek out inefficiency and find inefficiency and use proper money management and have a simple system 
sometimes just buying the stuff that goes up, as I often say, and said a few times tonight, then you'll do quite well in these inefficient markets and you'll end up making a heck of a lot of money. And that could be IPOs or it could be, it could be inefficient moves and efficient stocks, such as the CPE, which is a big thick stock. You thought I'd go a webinar without mentioning that one, right? <laughs> that we caught for about a 500% ride. Now, again, this is the point I'm trying to make. As a trader, your goal is to do what? To make money, right? Now, what you do with that money is up to you, obviously. But the only reason to have a trade is to make money, okay? And and yeah, you should enjoy it and you should like the challenge and be uh, fascinated with markets. But the bottom line is the only reason you should be trading is to make money. And I think you have to go where the money is. Now, please don't bet the form, okay? As I say each week, now would now would probably I'd be more than pissed off, but it wouldn't affect my lifestyle if everything blew up in crypto. So don't don't blow a shit ton of money on shit coins, right? But if you're practicing proper money management, you can kind of build it up over time and create some of these free positions, so to speak, free rolling then I think you'll do quite well. And I think that just kind of makes you more and more well-rounded as a trader. And again, when that ends, which it will at some point, okay, you'll be ready to move on to the next thing. Just like I said earlier, with the dot-com thing, those people who poo-pooed the entire dot-com thing didn't make a dime. Now, there will be crackdowns, but hopefully, I know a dangerous word, they'll take a while to go to zero. In other words, hit the stop First, or will the market care, as I'll show you in one second. Of course, speaking of stops, money management is crucial. So use protective stops, take partial profits, and free roll with trailing stops. And I'll walk you through that. As I said in the stock chart show, I found this picture when I was looking for some other graphics. And this is a black swan that, I don't know if it's the same one, but there was one that landed in my pond, and about a year or two later, this one landed in the pond across the street. I saved my pond. It's no longer my pond. I moved from the country. But anyway, I remember one time the swan landed and I was having a really hard time. <laughs> and uh, it was right before things really got bad. So it's like, you know, I always said next time the swan showed up, I get my Pelican out. But of course, I wouldn't do that. But anyway, so you do have to be careful about those black swans. Um, maybe I'm confused with issue with facts, but I am kind of excited that they're going to, they being Grayscale, is going to make a an, an ETF for Bitcoin, which I think is going to bring it to the masses. And I, I, that should be bullish. And I know I'm confusing the issue with facts. You know, I know. But that should be bullish. And anyway, while poking around their website to see when, I noticed they had a news flash that China banned crypto, and I'd, I'd forgotten that that happened actually, and or wasn't fully aware, I should say. I'd heard some rumblings about it, but I didn't know it was official. And that was on September 24th, and as I showed a couple days ago, this is September 24th, China bans crypto, and what happens? Crypto goes up 50%, <laughs> so just goes to show you, it might be here to stay. I'm not gonna say it's not gonna fluctuate, or as a friend of my wife, she's, she's a very little person. She's not a little person, but she's a person that's little. After a couple of glasses of wine, she says, one day I went in, well, I tried to put this in the book and the guy that was helping me edit it made me take it out. <laughs> but I walked in, you know, I dragged my ass into the house after a really shitty day and, um, She's like, what's up? And I said, like, ah, oh, you know, markets are killing me. And she says, well, markets will fluctuate. <laughs> yes, they will. So Bitcoins will fluctuate. Letters, we do get letters. This morning I asked if there's anything you guys want, want me to cover. And Mike P threw this out. Just throwing a few thoughts out there. I always love when you play the greatest hits. I tend to beat to that horse a lot. I appreciate that, Mike, for tolerating that. You know, it's like one time I wrote a column and I asked my wife to read. I don't ask her to read anymore, but um, I was like, what do you think? She goes, well, you say a lot of the same shit, you know, and it's like I was a little taken back. And then, 
you know, the next day I get an email and another email and another email and people are doing the same thing, same bad behavior and they know about it. So it's like, you know what? I'm going to keep keep saying those things until uh, it finally sinks in. It reminds me of, it was uh, Anthony Robbins, I think, tells the story of a preacher that said the same sermon every week and one of the patrons, patrons, is that a, what do you call them? Who goes to church? Anyway, one of the church goers pulled the pastor aside, said, I can't help but notice that you're saying the same thing every week. And said, yeah, I'm going to keep saying that thing, same thing until you people get it. Money manager, especially on some of these crazy intraday crypto and stock moves lately. We talked a little bit about some of that stuff in IPOs. I think I got stopped out of one of those. ARBK, we talked about that last week. And I really don't have any new ones to talk about there. But I do have a lot to say about crypto. <laughs> Tiny Elvis said, how you should not consider your success as a trader based on your results, but on the quality of the decisions you made that lead to those results. Amen. And and that's that's the hard part, the, the hindsight bias and the the double guessing like we talked about earlier and we talked about last week. And living with that, I said good day, sir, trade, and not not letting it affect your lifestyle too much. And I wear my, what's the saying? Wear your feelings on your sleeves or whatever. I forget how it goes, but it's like my wife can look at me, and and she knows she knows that things aren't going too well in here. And I'm a pretty emotional guy, and I think that's as I said before. I think that really helps. I'm kind of my own subject, my own patient when it comes to a lot of this trading psychology. But very important to figure out how to separate luck from skill. Annie Duke, thinking you bets, comes to mind on that. I haven't really, I hadn't gotten into a decisions book yet. Any of you guys have gotten into it yet? Anybody likes it? It's just the workbook aspect, as I've said before, I just, I don't feel like, you know, doing all the work. I just like to read the, the book, you know. But thinking you bet was excellent. It could be better. She could have given you more things, I think, but but it's certainly a, a, a great start. Um, you know, it would be great. I think one of the things she mentioned, which I kind of already knew, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but hold yourself accountable for your actions and hold yourself accountable for your decisions. I try to trade like someone is watching. And when I'm winging it, I feel really bad and I feel really guilty. And I and I know I'm I'm doing that bad behavior. The worst thing that can happen when I wing it is I make money. And that just kind of creates a slippery slope of bad behavior. And when I lose money, when I wing it, it's kind of like, I feel like my cousin Vinny, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I, I, I could use a good ass whipping, you know, I needed that ass whipping. And sometimes you do. So I'll, I'll touch upon that in, in future shows as things come up, especially with my own trials and tribulations. So he's got to go to a kid's concert. Oh, okay. Sometimes those can be okay, but mostly they're not. <laughs> I did say hope. Oh, sorry about that. So along the lines of the money management, I grabbed some live, some open trades from my crypto. And you could see in this particular case, we had a pullback. And it was also, I was doing the prettier girl swapping or the relative strength game. So this one was up the most at the particular time when I bought it. It was also coming out of pullback. So I do like when they're doing both, but sometimes I'll buy something going straight up. And I think I have a few examples of that in here. And it's hard. Sometimes it'll be up 100%. You're like, geez, I can't, I can't buy this while it's up so much. Well, never do that in the stock market as a general statement, unless we're going through some crazy times like 1999, right? But in crypto, sometimes you could do just that. But of course, have a chair ready for when music stops and immediately put in that IPT. And I'm learning as I go in some cases where many times I forget to put the IPT in. I come the next morning and see the one I was in, got in at what, I don't know, 30 cents. And next and overnight, I see it went to 60 cents or 65 cents, whatever the case may be. I think of a few examples of that. And then it's come all the way back down and end up either scratching out or worse in exiting at a loss. So money management, as Mike pointed out, is crucial. Stop is right here. So this is one that I'm free rolling on. And I'll go through all the free free rolling trades. 
In fact, this was from the stock chart show just just uh, was published yesterday, but this list was from the 26th. And since then, I got stopped at OMG, DOT, CRV, free rolling on all of these. And I was free rolling on SHIB, but I did, I'll put a half a hash mark through there or whatever you call that, because I got out of about 90% of it in the slide from earlier. We can take a look at that if we get a chance in a minute. So here was the SHIB, and the reason I want to show you the SHIB is it's a it was a 500% move that wasn't priced in, so to speak. So this is very inefficient, and it was up another 100% overnight from here. And you know, truth be told, I woke up and started counting my chickens in my morning notes, and that's always a dangerous thing to do. So here's what I'm free rolling on. The buy was here, and not that long afterwards. I was able to flip out half, and then my stop is a little bit above break even. So once again, wait and see mode. Let's see if this thing goes in at 100%. It stopped out. So what? I know, but believe me, right now another bus will come along. So I'm free rolling on that one. Now this is one we talked about a lot. I've been in this one forever, and then I did get knocked out at some point, but. You can see back here if you go back in prior presentations. And also, it's pretty cool. We've got a lot of those uh, 320 EMA breakouts, or at least one breakout back here, which would have been one hell of a ride higher, about 400%, uh, 500%. Oh, just too many percents to count. <laughs> but anyway, this one, it pulled back to 30 EMA and it started getting strong. And I might have been a little aggressive in entering on that. Sold out half and then taking that stop higher, just trailing it higher to see what happens. Boy, if they had intraday trailing stops, how great would that be in, in these crypto? If anybody knows of such a thing, kind of like Thinkorswim has, please let me know. Or such a brokerage, that'd be fantastic. KDA, I like this one because it was going up. And then, you know, on that day there, I don't remember how much it was, but I remember thinking, boy, this is hard to buy. But sometimes you can just buy something going straight up. Again, it does keep its score. 230 EMA back here, 230 EMA right here. And I bought it in a breakout. And as I was putting together this presentation earlier today, I noticed I sold it out or sold out half of it shortly thereafter or the next day at least and i think that might have been a mistake and i did i was like well i don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth i'm up 100 something percent 145 percent, i think so i went ahead and, and got that order in and sold half and i guess that's half a half so 689 281 is where i got in 408 that's 145 percent again so that's a nice inefficient move and then my stop is right here, giving it lots and lots of room to see what's gonna happen there. Probably not enough, the way crypto is so crazy. I think we showed this one already. But when I was putting together the presentation, I realized that I didn't have a stop in place. So I wanted to put my stop around break even. So technically, and you know, shame on me, right? But technically I should have had a stop right here, right around where I bought it. Because once you get half off, that stop goes to break even, right? And then I realized, like, oh, wait a minute, Dave, you don't have a stop in here. So I went ahead and put that stop in earlier. That's where it is. Now, for those keeping score, once again, and I don't know if I played it back here. I have to go back and look. I didn't have an account with this particular brokerage, but I think that XYM trades on other platforms. So I will need to go in and look maybe when I'm editing tomorrow and see if I actually took this little uh, 230 EMA breakout. But you've got two lows above the EMA, buy above the highest high of those two lows. And it's kind of cool because sometimes when these markets get choppy, like they do, like all markets do, you won't get any signals. You'll get, oh, not quite a signal. And then we're not shorting them at this particular juncture. So we're not gonna, we can ignore the downside signals. But a downside signal might get you out if you're long. And it might be something you wanna consider if, you're 
maybe doing like a, a 15 minutes intraday trade or something with these things. Now, I did a little poking around. A friend of mine that I met through stock charts, he's looking to do a little bit of mining. And so I started doing a little research on it. And one thing I found out really quick is it's it's a hard way to make a living. <laughs> you know, it sounds pretty easy. You buy one of these machines, you plug it in, and it makes money. So I found this one on eBay. These things are really hard to find. There's a lot of scammers out there, too, from what I understand. Somebody said the numbers are like ridiculous, like 90% of the of the mining machines you find online are scams. So eBay, believe it or not, might be the safest place. Don't don't go buy one and and you know curse me later. But I'm thinking eBay might be a safer place to buy one if it's somebody that has a good rating and is in the US. And you certainly have a better chance of getting your money back. A lot of these mining companies, so to speak, these sell miners, they're like, yeah, 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 we'll, we'll say a miner, but we don't take cash. You're going to have to send us crypto. And, you know, that's a little scary to send that crypto over there. You have no recourse. And, and, and you know, chalk, put that in the minus column for crypto. Once you pay somebody, pff, it, you're done, you know? So, and I did, I did try to pay somebody once with crypto and it got flagged as, um, somewhat dubious it was actually a transaction i wanted to make but it did get flagged somehow through i think coinbase or something but most of these crypto places are not going to play big brother so anyway so okay here's a miner here's a thing you plug it in it starts mining crypto and you make money well i went to asicminervalue.com and these are just estimates don't take this as as gospel but it gives you an idea about what you can make a day now i put in this was my old electricity rate, I think. I don't know if this is still the rate. And my electricity went up 50% last month. I swear to goodness, they I don't know how they got it through Public Service Commission, but all of a sudden the rates doubled. So I don't know if this is a double rate or not, but if it was the old rate, if the old rate was half of this, whew, that would be, maybe I would put a miner in a garage or two. But anyway, I looked at this miner and it's this one right here. So at eight cents a kilowatt hour, which isn't much, and it seems like a lot of people I talk to in different parts, like one of you guys up in Pennsylvania is like 12 cents a kilowatt. And, you know, let me know what it is a kilowatt where you are. I'd be interested in doing a little survey. But at eight cents, which seems to be relatively cheap, if you plug this thing in, it would lose $1.83 a day. <laughs> and that's a brand new $1,000 miner. Now, I'm not an expert in all this stuff. I just poked around a little bit, did a little internet surfing. It seemed to me like the only way you can make money is if you buy about a $10,000 miner. So I found this one for $12,000 on eBay, brand new from a trusted seller, so to speak, I guess. It makes $56.33 a day at eight cents a kilowatt. Hour. And you think to yourself, well, it would take 214 days to break even to pay for that miner, which is not too bad. But what's not factored into that is the cooling. Now, maybe one miner running by itself would be okay, but it's noisy, right? And so you probably don't want that in your house. Some of the YouTubes I'm watching, the younger guys that are doing the mining, their wives are complaining. And so they're they're putting these things in a garage and the garage is hot and then you got to cool the garage and all kinds of other things. The equipment failure, these things can fail because they run hot and, and a lot of things can go wrong. And from what I understand, the warranties aren't too great on them. And let's say you do have one with a good warranty. These things are in such high demand. I bet the turnaround, if you sent one back, would be a long, a long time. And also, I'd be willing to bet there's a lot of caveats. They'd say, well, you probably let it get too hot or whatever. They draw uh, a shit ton of power. You need 220, by the way, if you're gonna if you're gonna have one. I have 220 in the garage for hobby purposes. I had it put in when we built the house. And I was I've been toying with the idea of plugging one of these things in, but I'm beginning to change my mind. The other thing is you would have to be pretty tech savvy and take care of the equipment. And the other thing too is, let's say you just bought one for $12,000 and something goes wrong with it, then you've got all your eggs in one basket. It's almost like you would need more than 
one of these things. And let's say that you get a, a rate increase and I put I punched in 12 cents, which seems to be pretty pretty normal from what I've seen for most of you guys at least live in the bigger cities. So now you're only gonna make $33 a day. So it's gonna take you nearly twice as long to recoup your money. And then the other thing is what if, what if Bitcoin halves, okay? So now you're making half of half of that. And before you know it, it's kind of like the point I'm trying to make is all predictions about the future or about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. The friend of mine wants to do some GPU mining. I think he has leftover equipment from some other projects or whatever. He's a video guy. And one thing I've noticed is that there's a lot of stuff you got to be really careful with with the GPUs, which is they take a graph. You try to, you know, I remember a few years back, I tried to buy a graphic card before I found these little computers that have like six ports in the back. But a graphic cards, if you could find them, were like six hundred dollars each, just ridiculous. And that's because people wanted them for mining of bitcoins. Evidently, the the GPU, the way a GPU works, the graphics processing unit can do the calculations better than a than a CPU. What's CPU stand for? Central Processing Unit? Should know that. Anyway, so mining sounds kind of good. You just plug this thing in and it makes money, but eh, not always. And there's a lot of caveats there. So one thing I came to the conclusion in doing some of this, and I'm not, it's not to say that I'm still not watching mining videos and these mining forums and immersion mining and things of that nature, immersion, cooling, I should say. But it, I got to thinking, maybe I should just stick to my wheelhouse and I can mine these coins, so to speak, just by establishing as many free positions as possible, aka free rolling. So here's what I mined today, so to speak. This thing was up quite a bit and this took a leap of faith to buy okay and by the way if you are doing this relative strength trading make sure the market's all going crazy make sure things really going up and buy them as it's just going up but if that if you're uncomfortable doing that and believe me it's an uncomfortable way to trade then just paper trade for a while until you get a feel for it and that's the beauty of all this stuff you could paper trade and get a feel for it see how it works good bad and different of course the map is not the territory but if you can make money paper trading and i've never met an unsuccessful paper trader by the way <laughs> then you might be able to make money with real money now this one was really cool because i got in i left the house and it hit the ipt while i was away and then i've got to stop the break even i'm free rolling so we'll see what happens Linda Rasky once had a trade she called the gym trade. You put it on, you go off to the gym, and you forget about it. Well, by setting up the IPT and the stop ahead of time, this is what I call my version of the gym trade. And you'll notice the time here, 6.54 this morning. Or was it yesterday morning? Yesterday morning. I have a friend of mine and another friend, we get together at uh, just right around the block at 7 a.m. every morning and we work out religiously now it's a, and it's been great i'm glad i'm back in the gym so to speak and all but a lot of times i'm scrambling around 655 to get all these trades off and not all the time all the time you'd never see my fat ass again but it, well, quite a few times it seems like crypto's moving at that time in the morning and i put these trades on and put the ipts in and then i leave so I have a free position in this one, so I kind of mind it, so to speak. Now, how long would it take to get this 20% move is where my IPT was, and then, you know, knock on wood, let's say, or we could be hopeful here, right? Let's say, I forget exactly where I got in. I've got it written down here somewhere. This is what, uh, KRL, I don't even know how to say that, Career, dollar ten, okay? So 50% move, how long would it take you to make 50% mining crypto? And I know it would be kind of cool to have, you know, I'm a nerd. It would be kind of cool to have these little machines just kind of whirring away. But they're very, very, very noisy, by the way. You ever see these guys in these centers, they got on headphones. So the day ain't over. Maybe 
I could mine a few more before the day is done. And we'll take a look at these live in one second. TRIA, I got in this morning. The sell half hasn't hit yet. Hopefully, yet, so you are not sentence and I have a stop right here. On these breakouts, by the way, I use a fairly tight stop, a little bit different from the core methodology where I would use a much more liberal stop, okay? This is an inefficient market. They're moving right now. Another bus comes along every couple of minutes. KSU got in here. My initial profit target is up here and stop is down here. I guess the downside is in this form of mining, you can lose money actually, but you could also lose money with that other form of mining too. And you can lose money. There must be 50 ways to lose your money in the other way, just like there's always ways to lose money in trading. And here's the third one that I think I put on today, hoping for that free roll. And again, IPT up there, stop down here. Okay, fairly tight stop. Now, one thing I want to show you real quick, I left this, this little arrow. I've been trying to put arrows in the chart so I know where I actually got in. And the day before, or two days before this trade, so two days ago, I got in on this breakout and it got shaken out almost immediately, okay? And then I ended up getting back in today. But that's relative strength trading. That's whatever you want to call it, prettier girl swapping, prettier guy swapping, whatever you're into. As Dennis Miller says, <laughs> as I've said before, if you're into both, you're a greedy bastard. So here's my current free, free rolling list. Cyan means I've hit the IPT and there's a stop in place. So these are all the coins I've mined, so to speak, and we'll see what happens. And I think that you could probably make a lot more money trading these things, at least for now, than mining these things. Obviously, lots of downside to crypto. There's a lack of record uh, there's a lack of regulation, which can be a good thing and a bad thing. I think not all regulation is bad, although I really, really, really believe in free markets. You do have some recourse in stocks, SIPC, I think, and you have the what's that Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. But the governments don't like this a lot because they're missing out on on a lot of money. I, I and you know it's a pain in the butt, like with my Stock brokerages, I just print off whatever form they give you at the end of the year and I send it off to my CEPA. And it's like the, the crypto is such a nightmare. I didn't even want to, I didn't want to uh, trouble my CPA with that. So I spent days trying to figure out where would I owe them taxes or whatever. So do pay your taxes. But the governments, the governments are really, they're not liking this at all. And they might try to steal that punch bowl. And I don't know. I, I just think that it's it's getting to a point where it's it's going to be like, good luck. <laughs> it's it's for me. It's becoming harder because the money's becoming real. It was a game, and I was flippant, and I was doing all these things I said. Now I'm waking up. Oh goodness, you know I can't can't wait to wake up and see how much money I made overnight. And boy. You know, I'm really going to be depressed when when it goes down and it seems like I've got everything stuck a little bit and I was printing money earlier today, woke up and that shib was up, what, another 20% or 50% or whatever it was, 100%. <laughs> but now I'm starting to watch the equity swings a little bit and it's starting to bother me. Like, oh, wow, that's $1,000 and, and what, 30 seconds? <laughs> that That hurt, you know? And so if you want to be good as a trader, don't think about the money, right? Well, don't think about elephants either. You know, it's hard to, easier said than done. So it is becoming a little harder once the money becomes real. So like I said, or like I've said before, and maybe earlier in this presentation, of course, don't bet the form, put a, you know, open up a small account, mess around with it. But it does become a little harder once again, the money becomes real. Super volatile, uh, can they, be hard, they can be hard to hang on to. And as I alluded to a second ago, money can evaporate really quick. One of you guys was talking to one of your friends and he pointed out that one day in crypto is like almost four days of stock trading. Stock market's only open six and a half hours. It's not that liquid in after hours. You can make that argument, but it's tough to trade in after hours. But crypto, no problem. Open 24 hours a day. 
one of the downsides is a lot of times I come in and I see something up 100%. And I know if I was pretty or girl swapping, I would have been in those moves, but you know, I'm going to have to sleep sometime, right? And I think it was the other night, my wife likes to watch TV. And so that's kind of our together time at night. We watch TV, binge watch something or whatever. And, uh, you know, I, I would just be as happy just to whip out a laptop or whatever. But, uh, you know, I've got to have a little downtime. But every now and then I look at my phone, I'm like, oh, I need to go to my office and make some trades. You know, and, and I, I do. I have missed a few things. And it can become an obsession. So so there's no, because there's no breaks. Okay. It's like, so the market closed, what, two hours ago, three hours ago, four hours ago, whatever it was. And then I could say, okay, well, you know, I'm kind of bummed out. Let me look at everything. Oh, well, you know, today wasn't as bad as I thought. It looks like I might have eked out a small gain overall. Or even if I had a loss, it's like I could kind of wrap my head around it all and and, and rest a little bit. And then I'm ready to fight face the next day. Well, this stuff, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. So I can see where it could be an obsession. There's one of you guys out there. I'm trying to get you into it. But I'm glad you hadn't gotten into it because once you get into it, I think it might be your demise. <laughs> now, it can go to your head. Um, I've seen one of you guys talk about this. You treat Bitcoin as cash. I'm kind of a more of a bull on Ethereum than Bitcoin. and I just think that Ethereum seems more viable for whatever reason. I don't think either one's going away. Um, and I, I did put some money into Ethereum earlier tonight, treating it as cash. In other words, in between trades, park the money in Bitcoin or Ethereum. That's kind of a dangerous thing, I think. I need to rethink my strategy there. I ordered a HODL Shibu Inu shirt, T-shirt yesterday. That's just the opposite of what I preached, right? Hold on for dear life. But I just thought it'd be funny to have that shirt. And of course, it was the jinxy jinx of all jinxy jinx. That was the, the end of Shibu, at least for now. Shiba, I guess. I got it spelled wrong here. S-H-I-B-A. Shiba Inu. It's a dog. I think Elon Musk has one. That's where the joke came from. Crypto hot potato is what I've been calling it lately. It's like get it one and then get another one that's hot. Get another one's hot. Another one's hot. By the time I get fully positioned, if one's not hitting the IPT before you know it, I'm flipping it out. Did that a couple of days ago, and I established two or three of those those or those ones, those free rolling ones, or mine those, so to speak. And I was pretty exhausted by the end of the day, and didn't get a whole lot of else stuff done. And may have missed some opportunities in IPOs or or some of the some of the bread and butter things that I've worked 30 years on, you know. So. You got to be careful and you got to be careful not to chase your own tail. And it seems like after a day or two of this, at one point earlier this week, I was kind of the same place that I was, at least in one account after flipping out, you know, 50 trades or whatever. So be careful. Don't get too caught up and, and doing a whole lot. They're crazy inefficient. That's the upside. They're super volatile, which could be good and bad, right? But sometimes it's good. And again, Crypto trades more time in one day than stocks trading in four days, okay? One thing I was thinking about, maybe if you wanted to learn how to trade, you were brand new to trading, put a very small amount in crypto, and then look for the stronger ones, and then trade something like a 15 minutes, 2.30 EMA, and then in one day, you get four days worth of, worth of trading in. So I thought that'd be kind of interesting. Of course, you're going to have to sleep a little bit. These things are tangible, they're made up, they're hard to understand or justify. I was, my buddy's wife was over there, she was getting ready to leave for work, and I said, she says, what are you up to? I said, ah, I just traded a shit coin. She goes, what's that? I said, well, you've heard of Bitcoin, and she's like, no. And I was thinking to myself, I'm not gonna be able to explain this to her before she leaves for work, and maybe I don't even fully understand how it works, or maybe I don't have to as a trader. That's a good thing. So it's 100% emotional market. We're trading traders, not markets. And I know quite a few middle-aged people who, who've never gotten into markets. And it's like, you know, like one guy in particular called me up. He says, what do you think about Robinhood? My kid's doing this. Is he, has he lost his mind? Is he gonna lose all his money? I'm like, no, I think they're, they're fairly legit. But if you're gonna be an adult, you probably wanna move to a more, professional type of, of brokerage. Now, I don't know a lot about Robinhood, so not to insult the Robinhood people, but it just seems like, you know, you're trading off a little phone. You need to move to a monitor or eight <laughs> eventually. 
but it's it's amazing how these people never trade in their life and they're trading these things back and forth and they don't know what they are neither do we but anyway but emotional and irrational markets are traders best friend that's why ipo sometimes can be so amazing and when i did my ipo course as i said before a thousand times i couldn't i was trying to think of a name for it and i called it ipos the promise of the future because these things trade on promise not really reality and that's where the money is all right let's let me uh let me get a, a crypto screen up real quick we'll just go through a few of these I'm, I'm on a bit of a schedule so let's see if we could just get a few of these up and running tonight and then we'll um if you have any other if you want to start asking about individual stocks feel free to do so now All right, so here's a SHIB. This is a um, 15 minute chart. You can see it's starting to rally up a little bit, but it did implode for quite a while. Let's take a look. The cyans, these are the ones I'm free rolling on, we just talked about. And it doesn't look that pretty on a 15 minute chart. But like I said earlier, if you were new to trading, maybe you could say, okay, this one, especially while they're going up, you could say, okay, look, here's bar one, bar two, enter above this bar and then stop out at the 30 or a close below 30 like right here rinse and repeat now you probably ruin your eyes by the end of the day or after a while but it'd be a good way to get some reps in as far as trading is concerned so let's just take a real quick look and see if there's any hot potato trading to be done so we come here let's sort them by let's see if this let's see how's this this is doing by the way See, that's made a pretty good run there. I might have, I don't know why IPT is in that one. Oh, 105, okay. No, so we didn't quite get there. So my IPT is way up here. So that one didn't, I didn't mind that coin yet. TRIA, IPT is, is pretty high on that one. But hey, we might, have, we might have gotten there. We got close. It's in 19 and change up here. They ain't over with yet, right? And then the KCS not doing so hot. Now, see, I might think about flipping this one out, but notice that I bought a couple of days ago and I'm already thinking about flipping it out again because there might be something else that's worthwhile. The downside is you come in tomorrow, it's at 20 something dollars a share or whatever you call it, a token. And you realize that, dang, I was just in that and I flipped it out. So that's I'm not, I don't want to make it look like it's super easy trade. So anyway, if you're just looking at these, now, see one that looks kind of funky like this, kind of all over the place. I wouldn't rush out and buy that one. But like this one looks okay. Now, one thing I didn't talk about too much is liquidity. And I think I got in one a couple of days ago and I wasn't paying attention to liquidity. I got burnt pretty quick. But this pullback to the moving average is also one of the stronger ones. So I think this would be a good trade. Okay, 35.3598. We'll see where it goes over the next few days. This one's hitting new highs. It's kind of interesting. Notice that it did pull back to that 30 EMA. Nice run higher, pull back to the 30, take it off again. So hopefully, after a little while, you'll see these patterns. Okay, thrust, pull back, thrust, pull back. 230 EMA back there. Lots and lots of stuff. So you get the idea. And I'll spend more and more time going through these. And if the wife doesn't shoot me, maybe on Saturday, I'll do a uh, crypto, coffee and crypto, and we'll try to find some pairs to trade on Saturday morning. And I'll put that in the Facebook group while it's still live, or maybe we can do it live in Facebook. Okay, let's shift gears and get back to the markets. And there's a few things that we'll talk about in the markets. Any individual stocks, feel free to ask about those now. I just put in hard stops typically about 30 minutes after the open. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of hard stops, but sometimes I put them, I, I put in hard stops when things are, are getting a little dicey. And I know that I probably need to be out of a position and I'll move, I'll put those stocks in, in what I call the uh, 
chopping block list, so to speak, or exactly to speak, it's what I call it, the chopping block. All right, let's get the charts up here. Uh, sharing. All right, let's take a look at the overall market. Take a look at the P's first. S&P 500 closed at all time highs today. And one thing I often talk about is when a market's at high levels and not too far away from its old all time highs, I tend to err on the side of longer term trend. Doesn't mean I didn't get a little bearish back here on this bow tie, when the bow tie down and triggered and sold off fairly hard. But I don't get too excited until something like the TFM 10% system triggers. Just go to my YouTube channel, DaveLander.com slash C slash Dave Landry and Google TFM 10% and you'll get a few videos on that. Oh, by the way, I also have, for those who aren't gold members, if you sign up for a free membership at DaveLander.com, you'll get a market timing course, which has the, which has that in there. And I'll put a link up in post. Anyway, P is looking pretty good all-time highs. Not going to argue with that. NASDAQ, all-time highs. Again, not going to argue with that, okay? I'd like to see them get way past this little prior peak in here, but one day at a time. Russell 2000 is all a loaded place. It was down hard yesterday, but it made back all of that and then some up 2% today. Not too far away from all-time highs. Obviously stuck in this stupid sideways range, but trying to get out of it. As of late, as would say quite a bit, if we can get out of this base, that'll help it to launch into space, which I thought was my saying. And then I found out Ralph Akinpora said it before me. Energy's pulling back a little bit, looking pretty good. Nice little uptrend in energies. Financial services look like they're trying to rally out a bit of a knockout, a tiny knockout that is, not a, not a huge knockout, but looking pretty good. In here, some areas looking a little dubious or a little questionable, I should say, such as drugs, although they improved quite a bit today. Biotech, bit of a bounce today, but looking kind of ugly in here. I wouldn't rush out and buy biotech just yet. Transports, believe it or not, have been making the mother of all comebacks. I don't know if that has anything to do with the mess going on in this country with uh, transportation and everything else, but look at those transportation stocks. They're huge. So I find that kind of interesting. Software, right at all-time highs. Nice little trend there, okay. Semiconductors, what I'm more concerned about than the transports, but hey, you know, it's like a use of data girl. I have my rathers. If I had my rathers, I'd rather them both go up, right? I like the SIBIs to, to confirm what's going on in the overall market, and they did that today, today to close at all-time highs. So check back often, one day at a time as I preach, but right now, Things are improving, okay? And not that long ago, it was looking a little ugly. In fact, yesterday wasn't looking so high, but today's actually looks pretty darn good. And we might be out of the woods. Who knows? We'll see. All right, Stuart said he got into the IPO CYN today. I've been a little gun shy lately. I'm trying to think of the last one I bought. Um, VLD, I think, was the last one I bought. Oh, who missed uh, SO, what was it, SOVO? Did you guys talk about this one in the group? Ah, it's kicking myself in the butt. <laughs> why do we, why do we, oh, I guess the range was kind of small, huh? Yeah, that's what it is. Range was too small. Anybody take that one? Yeah, and see, that's the thing. You know, I, I put myself in a state of regret and looking at it, I probably didn't take it because the range was too small. Yeah, CYN, it's a little bit of a stealthy setup. Um, but yeah, new closing high. I mean, you've you got all the rules nailed. And sometimes these stealthy ones, they can really take off the next day. So congratulations on that one, Stuart. I hope at least. And uh, at the least, I'll be definitely, I definitely will watch that one tomorrow. If it closes a new high tomorrow or begins to take off, I might jump in with you on that one. But yeah, sometimes I like a little bit more definitive trigger than that, but it's, it, I think it's okay. Yeah, okay, Stuart, you got to figure it out. Yeah, so Stuart said hard stop, and then he puts in an IPT. That's what I've been doing in crypto now. When I first started trading crypto, as I was talking with one of you guys via private messaging, I wasn't using stops because you'd have these huge spikes overnight, and then I'd come in the next day, and it would all be done, and then I would get my initial profit target out and move on. 
But now that it's becoming real money, I'm having to be a lot more prudent in what I'm doing. I'm not saying that's a good idea to not use stops, but I'm just saying it was a little easier because I didn't really care about the money as much. And then it just kept coming back, kept coming back, which it won't always do, as you know. He who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. Sherry wants to talk about Baba. That's going to be a big, thick company. Um, I don't like it because it's in this big old fat longer term downtrend. Uh, I hear you though. It's it's sort of made a trend transition. It's probably also a bow tie. Yeah, there's your bow tie. So it looks okay. It's just super, super, super thick, but it has pretty good HV. It's going to have a little problems getting through some overhead supply. So I'm going to give that one a not bad, Sherry. And thanks for asking. You can certainly do much worse. Uh, this was just too, this was just too crazy, Alan, because it went straight up, and this is what I call a bottle rocket. It went up what 700 percent, and it came right back in. But Dave, all those cryptos going up. Well, crypto's just a crazy market right now. It's okay to trade those. But if this wasn't such a crazy move higher, I hear you thrust higher, followed by a pullback. But a little too crazy for me. UPST, that pulled back into the prior base, right? Is that the one? Yeah, this is the one that I don't like it because it looked okay and it was on my radar for a while, but then it pulled back into its prior base, okay? So notice you have a pullback here, it takes off, and then it pulled back below that prior peak, okay? Usually, unless I'm going pretty much straight up, I'll ignore the ones that pull back into the prior base. MITC, MITC. Yeah, this one looks okay, but it's super, super, super thin. Okay, Stuart. So I'd be super careful on this. What's the volume? And you trade something this thin, bad things can happen, you know. And now you know it's okay to trade an IPO early on. It's a little thin, or you know, then it becomes Hotel California. Like I think it was John. Always get always give wrong credit, but I think it was John Ross said in the group. And I've been in a few of those too. I think it was in BACC or something like that. It just died out, finally got out of it. But now that it's established itself, you know the volume. Look at that. It's only what? Is that 80,000 a day or 8,000? How much is that? Two zeros? It's not much. <laughs> I think it's 8,000 a day. It's not, it's, it's not a whole lot of volume. So I'd pass on that one just based on the volume. Oh, uh, right one? Yeah, I got the right one. Okay. A-O-I-F-F. -F. I don't know if I'll pull that up on this screen. A-O-I-F-F. -F. Yeah, I can't find that one. Do you have an, um, another symbol that might work? Cash. Ogre. Well, it didn't really... It didn't really ogre, okay? So, yeah, when you see a stock going kind of straight up like this, or mostly straight up, you see a little knockout move like this, a little TKO, and then the next day you see a gap lower, then, yeah, it's okay to go after it as an ogre. But notice it just kind of barely rallied a little bit. That could have sucked you in. But hopefully, if you're careful, that wouldn't suck you in, and then this thing imploded. Now, I know some of you that you, you bottom fish off the lows in these things, and it's a little dangerous thing to do. Damn you, Stuart. <laughs> Stuart took Sobo. <laughs> well, good for you, because, yeah, it looks it looks pretty good now. Now, I might take a secondary setup in that one, though, because, you know, back here, I think I passed because the range was too small. And that's the problem is I don't know why I pass on stocks sometimes. There's not enough. I look at 2,000 a day, so I can't write down exactly why I pass on every one of them. But if memory serves, or just looking at the chart, I'm imagining that the range was a little too small for me to get excited about it. But technically, because the day, the high was set on day one, the entry wouldn't have been, yeah, the range is still pretty small, but the entry would have been uh, right here, I guess. So yeah, it looks a little better there. But yeah, nice work on that one. I probably shouldn't have uh, missed that one. Janks, J-A-N-X, we did Bob already. Yeah, Janks I don't like. Um, because it's mostly headed lower and it's kind of rallied up a little bit. It's got a lot of overhead supply. So I would I would find IPOs, uh, Sherry, like uh, if you want an IPO, like Stuart Sobo is looking pretty good on a pullback, might be worth a shot, especially if it rallies a little bit more. Uh, VLD is one that I'm in, it's an IPO. 
not right now, but if it pulls back a little bit, it might be worth a shot. And that's a fairly narrow range. Well, this is down to seven, so that's a decent range. Entry was right here on this one so far, so good. Knock on wood. Come in. Dibs. Yeah, this one's kind of interesting. The only thing, and I don't know if I pointed this out or not. The only thing, I don't like this just one pop-up bar here. It's kind of funky looking, but it looks it looks okay. I guess I can't beat it up too much. It is a bow tie technically, and it has bottomed out, and I think it looks okay. It's a little bit on the thin side for a relatively new issue, but I'm going to give that one an okay. So a good eye on that one, Stuart, but it's just not... It, maybe I'm looking for too much perfection, but it's it's something that I'm not really excited about going after. Okay, any any else? Anything else? Well, while we're in impasse, I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Looks like we broke another record. Fantastic. We're finally getting the numbers back up again. So good to see you guys and girls and, and uh, lots of uh, ladies participating tonight. So that's good to see. But if we don't talk between now and then, everybody have a great weekend. I'm sure I'll see the rest of you guys and girls in Facebook tomorrow. Thank you so much. Anything unanswered, you can go to DaveLandry.com slash contact. Thank you very much. And I'll put a link in post. Thank you. And may the trend be with you.